Hey everyone, Justin Russell. Josh Schneider. Here today, we're bringing you a forward-facing sonar comparison of Active Target 2 versus Humminbird Mega Live. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so what I want to do is go over some of the conditions that we had today on the water out on lovely, muddy El Dorado Lake as normal. We've got about six inches of clarity. I figured there would be more, but it's been windy. Mm -hmm. However, something I want to bring up here is on the Active Target 2, we are using an HDS Pro 9, yep. which is a new product out here. Keep in mind, guys, something I didn't say in our other videos that if you may have, may, may have seen of the LVS 34 versus the Active Target 2. This is not production stuff yet. So we're still four or six weeks away from launch of Active Target 2 and some other stuff at the time of this filming. So there may be a lot of software adjustments that, that have occurred through this. They were up to the date of the latest software that they had available for us at the time with pre-production stuff. Mm -hmm. Mega Live has the latest software edition that we currently had. Yep. And on the Mega Live, we were using on a Apex 13. So. Mm -hmm the highest quality screen resolution unit that we could get, the Apex series, right? Yeah. So using on an amazing uh, unit, we're doing screen recording on both of these, all auto settings. So I wanna make that very, very clear yeah, here we, on we this. We do that on all of our comparison video, guys. If you've seen any in the past, it's all auto settings all the time. Um, the only quick thing I'll tell talk about the recording difference. So um, Lawrence and Garmin, when we do those recordings there, they're a wireless recording that comes through different app functions that they have. Um, Hummingbird is different from that. Um, it is a hardwired transfer of video. So HDMI it is a straight out. HDMI out yeah. that's going to a recorded video and do that. Um, again, just to talk about, we're trying to make it as close to apples to apples as possible yeah. because we can, guys. Just so, full disclosure, you guys know how everything goes down on it. And I will be the first to admit this. I did not do this, but I should have done this on the Hummerbird. I should have adjusted our down range on Hummingbird to more match the Active Target 2. Again, guys, all auto settings, restore factory defaults on this stuff. So, wanted to showcase that. We're going to start the very, very early on part of a brush pile, same mm -hmm. brush pile. It's got some rocks, got some uh, uh, wave break anchors in place, yep. some steel cables on it. It's got some crappie on it today. We're going to show that. And then on the second part of this video, we're actually going to end up in some timber. Yeah, standing timber. And, and going over that stuff and showing what that looks like. So mm -hmm. we're going to get started here with Active Target 2 on the left-hand side of your screen and the Hummingbird Mega Live on the right-hand side of the screen in forward mode. Okie dokie. All right, guys, you can see here the Active Target 2. We're seeing a little bit of fish. We're seeing some brush. We're starting to pick up on some brush and some fish here on Mega Live, okay? Yeah. We're trying to keep the angles for the same on the boats. I'm fighting the wind here, okay, guys? So you're going to see the screen rotate some. The image is going to change. We've got good target separation there. You can mm -hmm. see the crappie that are distinguished out. You can see a couple tree branches popping up over there on Active Target 2. Right. We're getting some of that here on yeah. Mega Live. It's just not as defined. You have an idea something's there, right? Every now and again at different angles, there's like glimpses of really awesome separation in the brush pile. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's not... It's not consistent. It's not, it's not holding consistent. It's there. And it, one thing I will say too, background noise. I um, wanted to stop this right here real quick clear. on the Mega Live. If you just saw this part of it right here, it looks like you see a school of fish. It is not, okay? That is literally part of the brush pile that just isn't shown very well. I don't even want to say it's not in the cone. It absolutely is. It's just not shown very well on here. If you look at the screen right here right now, if you took a snapshot of that, it'd look like bait fish, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's not. So just wanted to point that out. Um, yeah, like I was saying, the background noise, super, super clean on the Mega Live. Yeah. Uh, up in the water column itself um, looks solid. Here we're in the timber, um, standing timber. It's there, it, you're getting, again, it's kind of the same thing, glimpses of right there. Yeah. Glimpses of really amazing, that's great. You know, um, it's odd too because their cone is wider. Yes. Um, which is interesting. Two you know? degrees wider, by yeah. the way. Um, 
trying to correlate the difference of like why is one stronger and one not. Yeah, good time to pause on that. Also want to point out here, so we are using a Lowrance Ghost trolling motor, and I do not know why, but I was getting massive, massive feedback and interference when I'd hit the Lowrance Ghost trolling motor. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, I'll be honest, it doesn't make a lot of logical sense to me because it's a brushless, brushless motor, so we should not be having these sort of issues here. Do not uh, know why. Both of them were mounted to the same trolling motor, Yes. by the way, so. 100%. And all our comparisons, yes, and <laughs> all our comparisons, they are 100% installed on a trolling motor and utilized on the trolling motor. No other units are on, no other graphs are on, nothing else is running. We derig from that trolling motor and reinstall on that trolling motor to film the next one. So they're not running at the same time. We're just trying to film the same scenery each time we go out. So just want to point that Clean out with you as well too. with the empower to the units as yes, well. Yes, yes, 100%. Like Josh had said, there are some glimpses of stuff that looks really good on the Mega Live, but I don't see the fish and the target separation. There's some there. Big fish. Yeah, you can see a big fish moving on the Mega Live there. Well, yeah. I had to rotate the trailer, and here's you can see this is how bad I'm fighting right now, right? Yeah. Boy, there's a big fish on Active Target too. That similar. When you're looking at the similar range, that's a long fish right get, there. Yeah, you're getting some similar looks. When you look at the range, you know it's important to keep in mind. So you're 30 feet out, 30 feet out here. Um, getting some good returns. I, I don't want to short sell this, and the view is odd, right? Yeah. It's a honker of a fish just cruising through there, yeah. by the way. Yeah, on the neat. Mega Live, yeah. Yeah, on the big Mega fish. Live, that's a big fish. We've got some fish here on the standing timber. It's mm -hmm. not as easy for me to pick out fish on the timber on Mega Live as it is on Active Target, too. It's crappie, yeah. 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 You know, we're seeing fish on 60, 70 feet out. We're seeing some fish 50 feet out. <laughs> Excuse me, 50 feet out here. Both uh, big fish. looking... Besides a little bit on the bottom of the active target, no stitching issues, um, or very little to speak of. Yeah. Um, hardly any at all. I don't see any stitching issues on the Mega Live unless that's what's causing in and outs. I don't know, but the, the you know slightly on the bottom of the active target on the bottom of the lake bed for the active target. Um, but yeah. I'm Again, guys, all auto settings. I should have adjusted the downrange on the Mega Live to make it more even with the active target two and being yeah. that 20 foot, 25 foot, I guess it was at the depth that we were in there. Yeah. I do will say this, keep in mind, this is Lawrence's third version of forward facing sonar, whereas the Mega Live is Hummingbird's first version of this as well too. So we know what we saw when we saw like PS30, PS22s, um, live scope LVS 32, LVS 34. It's gotten exceptionally better mm -hmm. as it's gone on. Lowrance was the same way. Live sight, active target going to this. We've seen it getting yeah. enhanced and better. At, at I, this phase of the updates, I think Mega Live's looking really good. You know, for a Hummingbird first gen live sonar, right? Yeah. And with the updates that they've come, it's it's looking really solid. Definitely better than the first entries of the others. Hundred percent. Right, yeah. coming out of the gate, pretty solid. Um, it's looking good, and it's. Definitely viable, um, yeah. This 100%. is where I'll say, we saw this in ice fishing. It was way closer and down ice fishing oh, yeah. than it was looking at structure and trying to decipher fish. The fish right? themselves, you know, overall screen, screen clarity, um, lack of background clutter um, were fantastic. You know, um, we did get good target separation on schools of fish coming through in that context when they were a little closer in mm -hmm. range. Sure. You know, more playing with it. Maybe you figure out that's more of a determined And I factor. will say, I think the Hummerbird had the fastest response yeah. in terms of delay, right? So I want to say it probably went Hummingbird, uh, LVS 34, and then Lowrance was very, very shortly behind mm -hmm. uh, with the active target too than, than the uh, LVS 34. But that Hummingbird on down, it was, it was right, right yeah, it was literally like real time. When we're talking about delay, it's like when you're off moving a jig, right? You can feel and see what's happening and it felt absolutely like real time where there's a slight, I mean, it's super minor, but you can see the difference in the slight lag. Like a, 
You know, it's like a really solid kung fu movie, not yeah. like an old shitty one. <laughs> you yeah. know, like it's, but it's there, but it's just yeah, it's a little bit. Guys, I'm going to go ahead and say this. I do feel like in this case, the Active Target 2 was better, but understandably so. Third version of it, or third version of forward facing sonar yeah. live imaging versus hummingbirds first. I would expect that, right? Yeah, and it wasn't a runaway. You right. know, yeah, which is, which is cool. I mean, to see them all, you know, we've talked about it before. If you're running Hummingbird, if you're if you're pleased with your Hummingbird units, are you going to switch, or is Mega Live going to be 100% useful for you? Depending on the type of fishing you're going to do, um, I say if you're ice fishing or in down mode, a lot of the time, I'd say you could Hummingbird Mega Live's completely it's fantastic, usable. Yeah. I say if you're really dedicated and want to spend a lot of time with forward-facing sonar. I would say you'd probably either have to look at Lowrance or the LVS 34 hmm. to mount on your boat as independent of that, if that's what you're looking for, right? If that's all you're doing. Yes, yeah. 100%. Yeah. So, uh, Solid products all around. Yeah, there. absolutely. Yeah. You know, we know where the other ones excel at, where the other ones maybe lack. We know Hummingbird side imaging is absolutely amazing. We know their uh, Lake Master mapping is absolutely amazing. 360. Yeah, yeah 360, yeah, 100%. So yeah. there are really good things that Hummingbird does do as well, too. So. Yeah. All right, guys, this concludes our uh, comparison today of Active Target 2 versus Mega Live, but we've got more comparisons coming your way. So be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Yeah. See you guys next time. See ya.